Hello guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel of the Concept Guy. And in this video, we will actually visualize the polar coordinates in a sphere. Okay, so this is my sphere. And what's special about this video is that we are using Blender software to actually visualize this in a 3D space, as you can see. So we are in a 3D space. Yes, we are in a 3D space and it will help us to visualize the polar coordinates more efficiently. So let's start it. So what we have done here is that we have taken a mesh of this sphere. Okay, only the lines not completely filled actually and we have taken a single point here at any position in the sphere okay so this is my single point if you can see i can show it from all directions it's not in the xy plane it's not completely on any axis it's just a random point kind of facing towards that direction let me see what direction is it facing okay so it's kind of facing that direction okay so what we have taken here is this point and we will move it and actually move it to a small increment okay a little movement and then integrate it okay integrate all the small movements and finally bring out this sphere so let's start it and here first of all what, what we need to do is mention the okay we need to mention the angles so we go to the x direction c from here and let's take this direction if i could actually mark it well yes uh, i'm putting my marking okay uh yes i hope it's kind of an arrow i just don't know if it really looks like okay so if this angle is theta okay i need to write theta here okay this is my theta wow kind of nice okay so this is my theta angle so obviously this is 90 minus theta okay this angle is 90 minus theta you all know already this okay so i'm not say going for that but this is my theta let's assume this okay this is kind of here if you see this z y plane and next we want to look at the other angle other angle means my point from the x y okay uh it's almost z if i see yes i'm facing towards the z okay and this angle let it be my what should it be okay uh let's take it uh come on i need to do it a little fast yes this be my phi okay so let me just see ah this is my phi okay so this is my phi and that is my theta we have actually now assume the angles and let's now see how is the movement there so if I consider this point actually I resolve this point in the x y plane what I will get is suppose I resolve it down okay okay I take it down you come down here please and we see that if this length okay okay let me just undo this uh, if this length from here to this point if this length is my r okay if this length is my r then what we can say here is that this point actually resolves to two things one is r cos theta this is r you know that this is r okay this is my r so this is this part is my this part is r cos theta okay this is r cos theta r cos theta and the other part in the xy plane is r sin theta okay so the other part is r sin theta and what we can see and what we can see here is there is a change okay so if r sine theta is this a change in this would actually mean a change in my phi so this be my i'm writing here this be my d phi okay a small change in phi this small change okay this be my d phi then i can actually say if this is my r sine theta this length is r sine theta and this is d phi so this change is actually you know that it's r r sine theta d phi r sine r sine theta d phi yes that's it so it's r sine theta d phi okay this part and a change in this r okay a change in this r could be there okay because this point can also move up here and there okay it can move up and down it can move up to this distance so i've got a kind of a incremental area okay so this is my incremental area and i will write it as i will write it as r sine theta d phi that is my length into breadth so my breadth will be the change in r okay let's write it again so it will be my dr okay if it's not looking like r i will write it again so yes it's r sine theta length into breadth that's my incremental area and finally we need the incremental height to get the dv that's the d the small increment in r volume okay so we need this thing and this is only the area so this is actually the area okay so what's the height okay 
let's cancel this all and let's see come on okay it's not coming so let's see what's my height so a change in r cos theta is the change in height okay so what we can see is let me write here d r cos theta but we can actually see that the point moves up and down a very small bit okay it moves up very small okay this is very 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 small okay this kind of length the change in length is so small that this could be actually set to be almost r okay so this becomes almost my r d theta okay r d theta why it becomes so because the cos theta is so small that it actually the r cos theta is most so so small that this d theta and this my r has a curved path here has a path here of r d theta so this is my r d theta let's undo everything so i have my r d theta from here that's my incremental height okay let's now move here a bit so r d theta and that multiplied by r sine r sine theta okay r sine theta the component resolution of this in the x y plane and r sine theta and d phi then uh, r sine theta d phi and my the change in the length that is dr okay this is my dr okay so this is overall my change in volume okay r d theta and r sine theta d phi and dr and what we see here is this z is r cos theta x is r sine theta into cos phi because cos component being here and r and my y axis being the r sine theta first we move this down r sine theta and then sine phi if this is cos phi this is sine phi okay let's move on to calculate the volume from this equation okay so what we see here is that i have triple integration of i have to do triple integration of my result what this result and this will give me what will it give me the whole sphere volume yes let's see so this is my the whole result actually leads to r square sine theta dr d theta d phi yes so it's r square sine theta uh, let's move it a bit r square sine theta d theta let's take dr first anyways you can actually integrate in any order so dr d theta d phi okay so we have this and so let's take it the one eighth of the sphere okay so the volume is one of eight volume is one of eight of sphere this is sphere okay it's one eighth volume okay and we will integrate it from zero to r because this dr is there and for d uh, theta will zero will integrate it from zero to pi by two and for d phi also we will take zero to pi by two solving this first okay this first then this second then lastly this okay so for first this point we can actually say that the r square will only integrate and give us r cube by three so it will give us r cube by three and next integrating this sine theta it will give us cos theta actually minus cos theta but as you can see it's like you have a minus sign here let's say and it's like cos pi by 2 that is 0 minus cos cos 0 that's 1 okay so this minus sign actually cancels out that's why i'm not writing it okay so it's like this only and finally for my d5 from 0 to pi by 2 it's like pi by 2 minus 0 so this 0 actually has no meaning here because ultimately pi by 2 comes and this is my actually 4 by 3 okay 1 by 8 okay 1 by 8 uh, let me write it correctly 1 by 8 of 4 by 3 pi r cube yes that's the volume of this sphere and 1 8th of that we have calculated using our visualization which was so easy okay and i hope you like this video please like share and subscribe so that you can actually see what next it will come for the various polar coordinates okay i hope you liked it and please do subscribe my channel and share this video so that other people get to know about this stuff. Thank you.